it's working. Oh, everything's working. Can you hear me like that? Yes? OK, right. So hello, everyone. I'm super happy to be back, like physically, here at the Nix conference to meet all of you. Um, I am Guillaume Modou. Uh, I'm known as Legus Online everywhere where I am, basically. And I'm here to present you the improvements I am trying to make to the Nix Arrow traces. Uh, I'm, I'm currently employed by Twig, and that's what allows me to work on that outside of my spare and free time. So that's pretty nice. And actually, this whole story started at Twig with someone asking a question like that. Can you help me understand this error message? Do you have any idea what's happening here? How to fix that? Where to look for the issue? I mean, go ahead, or I will explain it if you want. So what we have here is that we are calling a built-in as attribute. So we are testing if an attribute set as some entry, and that entry needs to be a string. Apparently, we passed a Boolean for that value. So the error is not at all where it seems to be. There is nothing to do with the built-in itself, but it's like with the value we passed, the built-in cannot do anything and tries to convey that. And it does that by passing the closest position it has access to, which is this one. So I went into the source code, trying to understand like if we could do better, if we could improve it, pass a better message, and you start small and it leads you very far. So if we get back to this error message, what could we do to improve it? My first idea was, OK, I don't think this position relates to the error. It should be separated. The position is about some context, but not about the error itself. So let's just drop it. I think this message is better because it's less confusing, but it's also way less useful because now we have no idea of what's happening. So let's reinstall the position that we have with some, like, as a context to the error. And we use traces for that. But sadly, traces are not displayed by default. So to improve our message, I think we should display some of the traces, at least three, or like the, the, the shortest context around it. So now we have exactly that the error, and then one trace, which, is, which has a text. OK, the error happened while we were calling the built-in. And now we have a proper position that represents the position where the built-in was called. And the text and the position work along together. I went to do some like lifting and trying to make things nice. I like to have the position um, attached to the text. Otherwise, it's sometimes difficult to tell like, what position relates to which text when you have a very long trace. And I usually get kind of a bit messed with the alternation of positions and text. And now we come to the core of this PR that I'm trying to finish. It's we can add more context. And in this case, we can add one sentence that explains what's the correlation, what's the link between the position and the context we have and the error that's pops out. And it's a small sentence, but it does a wonderful job at trying to, OK, I understand. It's not a built-in itself, but that, that built-in has some requirement that I need to fix. So I went through the source code and found about 250 places where I could add a message. And I did that by going to the functions that usually produce an error, like for string, which means in the C++ code that at that point we need a string. Uh, when you force float, when you coerce to string, all of these functions usually can have an error because it could be that you pass the wrong type and it will error out. So for each of these functions, I require by the type of the function that the user specifies an explanation of what is happening. So that's when the error is printed, we get a proper context for it. Sometimes it's very simple, like while ev evaluating the first argument passed to built-in that has attributes. Sometimes it's way more complex, like while evaluating one element of the list of strings to concats that you pass to built-in concat string set. Um, maybe it's possible to do better than that, but for now, with the current um, information that is available in the Nix source code, it's difficult to do more. Um, so yeah, there are a few related projects. Actually, uh, there was a Nix error enhancement proposal that has not landed yet, and it's more generic than these evaluation traces. It's like about all of the Nix errors that can happen, like network errors also, and trying to make them nicer. I get both initiatives could join to make it uh, 
like a super uh, printing error printing device. There is the debugger that recently landed. If you have not played with that yet, it's very, very interesting. It's still a bit different because it only looks at frames, so like function calls. And this is about what's inside the built-in, like inside the, the expression themselves. And then there is HNIX. That is the project I try to use to inspect what's happening with uh, Nix. Because Nix, by trying to be fast, lose or like discards a lot of information that could be useful for debugging. So that's the reason why it's sometimes difficult to have proper error outputs with Nix, because it tries to be fast, sadly. <laughs> you have to pick one of the two, apparently. Uh, and the project is not finished yet, because like there are still no tests, and all of that code is untested. Uh, there are some corner cases that I don't know how to handle, and then there are like, I think I need more validation through concrete examples, and that's where you can help. If you ever find some strange error message or some long error message, please send that to me, and I will try to see if uh, my PR fixes that or improves the error traces. Uh, I don't think we have time for questions, sadly, but that's it for me. <laughs>